All right, this is a throwing demonstration. I always start with as fresh clay as I can find, uh, something that's homogenous where it's all about the same amount of, of dryness. I don't want bumps and I don't want hard spots if I can avoid it. I wedge, which is a process of trying to get the air out of the clay. I use a thrower's wedge, which is this spiral. And it does a couple things. It gets the air out of the clay. You don't want bubbles of air in your clay. But it also warms the clay up and gets it going in a, in a circular fashion. Once I've wedged it a while, I should have gotten rid of all the moisture or all the uh, air bubbles out of it. Now I'm going to pound it into a cube. I start with a cube because a cube is actually very easy to make into a ball, a sphere. I want to get rid of as many little wrinkles as I can. Once you have a cube, you can pound the corners down and make a sphere. You should start with a piece of, again, homogeneous clay. Homogeneous means it's all the same consistency. Now we're at the wheel. I use a bent model wheel, um, or Brent, that's a model and manufacturer. It has a foot pedal to control the speed. This is a splice tray. And I use a bat system, which lets me lift the projects on and off easily without having to cut them off and have them fall apart. You have to find the three little pegs and line it up on these studs. If you've used your bat a lot, you want to occasionally check and make sure it's still flat and running true. Take your ball of clay. You don't have to slam it down, just push it down kind of firmly. I run the wheel at slow speed and I use my hands to see if I pushed it off and made it real lopsided. I can always come in and pad it a little bit. This is running close enough. First thing we have to do is we have to center the clay on the wheel. And to do that, we wet our hands, we get the clay wet, and then we have to brace our hands. I'm going to use this part of my hand as the stable hand. This hand can't move. And what happens is the clay swings by it. If my hand moves, then my clay doesn't ever get into the, into the round or centered position. If I can hold this steady, then the clay has got to be forced into position. So I'm going to keep one hand here. I tuck my elbow to the inside of my legs, keep my feet flat on the floor, because I want to really be able to stabilize that hand. And this is the hard part for most people. I'm going to push down on it, and I'm going to use this finger to just sort of seal the bottom of the clay against the bat. And then I'm going to push down more and squeeze in and bring the clay up. This is the first part of center. On the Brent wheels, I can use the higher speed. On these little wheels we have, you want to slow the tab it as fast as you can get it. Again, I'm trying to stabilize my left hand. Once I've coned it up, I get my hands wet again. I'm going to use this part of my hand to push down on the top, and it's going to billow out like a mushroom. And as it billows out, it's going to flow into this part of my hand. This part of the hand doesn't move. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm centering just, as, just that ridge of clay as it comes down. I can't do the whole thing at once, that's too hard. I'll wrap one hand over the other, and at high speed I just start bringing it down. Rewet my hand, go down a little further. don't move your hands very fast and you don't pull them away fast because that will tend to suck the clay out of position. You want to make sure if your hand starts to drag then you just need to re-wet it. And that's centered. I've got a little lump of clay here I'm going to just get rid of. I don't want a lump there that bounces my hand as I go up and down. If it's properly centered, you should be able to take your thumb or your finger and run it along the top and side and your finger doesn't bounce. And that's 
it's fairly steady and fairly centered. I run into a little bounce down here, so I need a little more work in. This one, I'm just going to hold my hand against it as tight as I can and let that clay flow until it goes into round. And we'll check it again. So got a little bit of a bump there. That's probably close enough. So now I don't think my finger is bouncing at all as it goes down the side. Once it's centered, now we're going to open it up. We start to make some decisions as to how big we want the inside of the bo bottom at this point. I get both my hands wet, and at top speed again, or at high speed, keep my fingers on the outside of the clay mass. My thumbs are going to go to the center, and you can feel they're in the center, and you just press down. Pretty soon it's going to use up the moisture, so I'm going to press down a little bit, pull my hands away slowly, add a little more moisture. And go until I hit the area that I think should be the, the thickness of the bottom. I'll take my sponge again, I want to get any excess moisture out of the bottom. I'm going to take a needle tool. And I'm going to figure out how thick the bottom is. I'm going to run this down to the bottom and slide my thumb down until I feel the clay. I tracked it. I can tell that the thickness of it is about that far. That's not too bad on a little bowl like this. So now with both hands wet again, I'm going to wrap my thumb around my hand. I'm going to use this finger and I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to do that kind of slow. My hand movements are going to be slow, but the wheel speed should be fairly fast. I'm going to take that center finger and I'm going to push it down on the bottom and compress the bottom, the clay in the bottom a little bit. Once I have a fairly compressed and fairly flat bottom, then I should be ready to push the sidewalls up. So there we've got the bottom. Now I'm ready for my first move to pull it up. I've been using my whole hand on this, um, different ways to do it. I'm just going to push with my left hand and I'm going to start bringing it up. As long as there's enough moisture, we should be able to make a nice cone. And there's our first move. Now for our next move to pull it up, I'm going to take a wet sponge. I'm going to wrap my thumb around my hand so I can judge the distance here. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my, the strongest part of my finger, I've got the sponge over for lubrication, and I'm going to squeeze in very slowly, and I'm going to squeeze a bulge of clay up in here, and then I'm going to pull that bulge up. Try to pull it up straight if I can this you can change the speed a little bit. Wheel speed should be fairly slow because the centrifugal force will pull it apart if we don't. You can look right down the barrel here and see what your thickness is. You want it to be fairly uniform. You can move your hands slowly and pull them away slowly. Now I'm ready for my next pull. This is where if you're not centered, it's going to show up. With this foot pedal, I can slow the wheel down as I pull up. You start getting weaker and weaker at the top. And then I'm ready for another pull. running my finger down the inside of it to smooth it out a little bit. You can also take a look at this point and see how thick my walls are. Fairly thick at the bottom. I've got at least one more pull. 
you try to do it in three or four pulls because the more you pull on it, the more you run this wet sponge over it, the wetter the clay gets and the weaker the walls will be. leave some mass at the top. One thing you can always do is you can collar in. You take the hands like this and bring the whole thing in at the top. I want the top to be kind of the narrowest part as I'm doing this initial pull. I don't want it to flare out because then it gets really weak. I'm also going to start removing moisture now. I want to keep the moisture content as minimal as I can. I've got to have enough to throw it, but I don't want it to get wet and soft. I'm taking a dry sponge and going in the bottom and gathering the moisture at the bottom and a little bit up the side walls. Might have another throw in that. I'm a little off on the bottom. It's always a risk to these last throws because it seems like you push too hard or you create a weak spot and it collapses. So I want to go kind of slow. There will always be some of this that we cut off on the bottom. We need to leave some for support. Okay. I always take a strain edge tool also. Okay, I'm just going to take this tool and make sure my sides are fairly uniform. I'm running my finger down the inside. If I felt any rings or real thick spots, I probably won't take care of that. It would mean that I, I missed an area or went too fast when I pulled up. Okay, that should be pretty good. Now we've got our column. This is the basic starting position that we're going to use a little bit and see where I am. There are lots of different ways to put shape in. I'm going to take my fingers and just start pushing out. I might make this a little bulge out a little bit. You have to keep in mind if you've thrown this fairly thin, you can't push out as far as you might like. You also can't bulge it out so much that it collapses, and that's something you learn, I think, with experience and a little judgment. But we don't want it to fold over on itself. Sort of a jar shape here. Just a little at a time, but not too far. Now you always look at it from the side to see what you've done. If you always look at it from an up or from the top side, you can't tell what you've done. So that's kind of rounded. I'm not too worried about that bottom because I'm going to cut some of that off. I'd like to bring the top in for my little design here. I'm going to get my fingers wet. I'm just going to slowly bring it in. If I grab it on several sides, it'll just work its way in. When you do this, the top becomes fairly uneven. I'm not sure there's any real way to By bringing it in, you've also created some thickness at the neck. And this, by the way, is called necking. And if we want, we can pull again. We can bring that neck up just a little bit. And then have a little room. basic shape. I want to trim that top off and to do that I'm going to hold the needle tool real firmly and I'm going to bring it in until it meets my finger.
sponge and I can wrap it, make that. And we, we, want it, we want to have rounded edges. If we have sharp corners, they tend to chip. at it from the side like to leave a little bit of a sort of like a ring at the top. I'll pay, probably make a little lid for this. One thing we can do is we can do some decoration on the side while it's on the wheel. You can use a stainless steel, these are called ribs. These plastic ones or nylon ones are really nice, they're soft. With a metal scraper you can get an almost glass-like edge. We're just going to try to smooth this off a little bit. Run along the edge of our pot. You can eliminate the texture there if you want to. That's enough shaping for now. You can do all sorts of things with it. You can cut into it, take a tool like this, and create a hard edge. Now's the time to do it. The last thing, really the last big thing we do, is we have to cut some of the mass off the bottom. We've left some of that for stability. But to do that, we're going to use the pointy stick. There's probably a name for it. I call it the pointy stick, which seems to be close enough. I'm going to hold it as firmly as I can. I'm going to hold it up next to the pot and see that I'm centered. Bring it, bring it down. Now I can take our needle tool again. I'll undercut that. Cut that ring off. That gives us pretty close to our final shape. There are lots of tools you can use to clean up that edge if you want to. Come in with this tool. Try to make that a little smoother. We can continue to work on that. Once it's gotten to be leather hard, we'll flip it upside down and we'll use a tool to turn that. The last thing we'll always do is we'll cut it off the bat with our wire tool. You want to take the wire tool, wrap it around your fingers, hold it so you can hold it real flat, and with the wheel at slow speed, just let the wheel cut it for us. And that should be freed up from the wheel. One thing it's a good idea to do every once in a while to see how you're doing is to cut your pot and see whether your sidewalls are about the uniform thickness. That will tell you a lot about how you're doing. I've still got a little bit of mass down here. But basically the wall thickness is about uniform throughout. I didn't cut that off. But I've got enough bottom. And it should stand up. I left a little moisture in it. I probably didn't need to do that. I can cut this down when we turn it upside down and flip it. And we'll cut that little weight off the bottom and we'll put a foot on it. And those are the basics. <laughs>